Right up here. Right behind you. Yes, Mr. Minister, I'm Tom Reckford with the World Affairs Council and the Malaysia America Society. Uh, you mentioned in your formal remarks that uh, the relatively new ASEAN Charter is a work in progress. How would Indonesia like to see it improved? Thank you. Well, ASEAN, we have plenty of documents, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> we have been quite, quite efficient and effective in, cre in creating all kinds of uh, actions or plans of actions and blueprints and, and all that. Uh, it's just basically getting down to the business of implementing them, uh, to be honest. Uh, all the wherewithal are there, uh, all the commitments are made absolutely crystal clear. But in saying that, I don't want to be too uh, cynical because uh, precisely the problem in the past prior to 2003 was that many of ASEAN's conduct and, and business was done in a, in a, in a there wasn't, it wasn't a rules-based organization. So now we have all the paraphernalia are there and, and we are keen to, uh, to ensure that we really follow that up. Indonesia, in 2003, when we took up the chairmanship of ASEAN, we were determined not to only chair ASEAN, but to provide some kind of uh, earned uh, leadership. Uh, and by that we mean we introduce this concept of the ASEAN with the three pillars, especially the uh, political pillars, namely the uh, greater attention to human rights issues. Uh, seven years later, I think we are in a better state than we were in 2003, but we are not complacent. We need to ensure quick wins, uh, uh, early delivery of some of our commitments, especially in the political area, because the, uh, the economic dimension I'm not overly pessimistic because there, there tend to be market forces has its own uh, motivation and its own dynamics and things to, tend to happen in any case in terms of greater integration. But the political uh, community, security community needs a lot of cajoling and needs a lot of encouragement and a lot of uh, comfort level building. And, and Indonesia, as I said before, we have many problems on our part, enough to share to, to encourage other ASEAN countries not to feel a bit uh, negative if they bring their own problems or challenges to the ASEAN uh, forum. Uh, we have the ASEAN Human Rights, uh, uh, Intergovernmental Human Rights Commission, uh, one of the blue ribbon organization within the human rights dimension that we are keen to promote. Uh, but uh, we have, as I said, all the wherewithal are there, the, inst the institutions, the documents are there, we need to ensure a quick delivery and, and actual actions, not simply plan for actions. I have time for one or two more questions. We'll just back here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Freeman. Thank you, Minister, for your comments. My name is Scott Morgan. I'm with a communication firm here in Washington. I was particularly struck by your comments about the university cooperations yes. that you might see. Would you mind elaborating on that and what we might foresee in the future as that unfolds? Well, yes, um, I'll, I'll be keen later on for you to have a, 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 more, a lengthier and more complete conversation with our newly uh, presented uh, ambassador. Because ambass I know this is a, 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 a project that our ambassador is extremely keen to, to focus on. Uh, as I said before in my remarks, uh, we think it's absolutely, and I mean, it's really unsatisfactory to find ourselves now uh, compared to, was it 10 years ago? Uh, we had f some 14,000 Indonesian students studying here in the United States, uh, and now we are down to 7,000, half you know, over the past 10 years. So we must be very uh, brutally honest to find out where we are going wrong, uh, why is the figure going down, and, and, and to identify where bottlenecks are, where opportunities are being missed. And I know that Ambassador Dino Jalal is uh, looking at that possibility. Uh, because we are going to reap the dividend of having increased number of Indonesian students here studying in the United States, uh, not immediately, but in the years to come. And, and I must say that uh, there have been a lot of uh, uh, good partners that have come forward, uh, including involving our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We have now many Indonesian diplomats, young Indonesian diplomats who are being uh, educated and trained for their masters and, and, and uh, and their uh, doctoral degrees here in the United States uh, is part and parcel of diversifying and strengthening our bilateral relations. But certainly this is an issue that uh, we are going to really zero in on. We plan to have a so-called education summit uh, next March or April, I think, 
uh, precisely to bring this issue to the fore. But I want to emphasize as well uh, that uh, this, is not, this, this should not be a one-way process. It shouldn't be only about uh, Indonesian students coming to the United States. Hopefully, I'd like to think uh, that uh, United States students as well will find it worthwhile, if not full-time, to study in Indonesia, but at least to spend part of their semester in some kind of exchange program uh, in Indonesian universities. Uh, I know that there's been a pro challenge in the past in terms of uh, uh, security situation and safety and security and all that, but I, so I hope uh, that kind of issue can be better addressed uh, just now. So it's, it's a very important plank in our bilateral cooperation and one that will be obtaining a great deal of attention when I meet uh, Secretary Clinton later on this morning. In the back. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and Salamat Hari Raya, Minister uh, Mati. Uh, my name is Fuadi Pitsuan. I work with Ambassador Nick Burns and Secretary Bill Cohen at, at a small consulting firm here in DC. Mr. Minister, I was a non believer in uh, private sector and how it can bring about change. But after having worked in one, I think it's actually the opposite. I think private sector is actually has to lead this change. And my question to you is, how would you incorporate private sector in this joint commission that you are about to launch with Secretary, Secretary Clinton? And that's my first question. And my second point is, I happen to be Thai, an ASEAN citizen, and I am just going to make a plea to you that if the situation in, on the ground actually get better within next week, I would love for your president to participate in this U.S. ASEAN summit because you know that the result of this summit will be suboptimal without your president. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have taken full note of the point that you said earlier, late, the, the latter point about the importance of our president's participation in the summit that is to be convened later this week, like next week. As I said before, uh, it's just one of those things that, ha that happens, uh, not in any way a reflection of our lack of uh, uh, recognition of the importance of the event, but certainly our delegation will be very much uh, imbued with the importance of that occasion, and, and especially as we will be chairing ASEAN uh, next year, so we have every interest to ensure that this particular summit that is uh, going to take place next week provides a good uh, stepping stone towards 2011. And we hope to have, of course, President Obama uh, in the United States later on formally join the East Asia Summit uh, next October when we convene the East Asia Summit in, in Indonesia. Uh, on the first issue, I, I'd like to define the private sector there not only in terms of business, uh, because uh, when, especially when we talk of bilateral relations and even within ASEAN as well, uh, we must really empower and involve not only the private sector, meaning the business community, but also the civil society as well. And, and uh, what is most striking in the most recent uh, infrastructure in our bilateral relations that Indonesia is building with the United States is the, the fact that it is now being made more broader, uh, no longer simply among people like ourselves in terms of government uh, representatives, but also the business community, the civil society is also more actively engaged. But uh, I think all these things are taking place in any case uh, just now. Uh, what, what our task is how we can ensure better synergy, uh, awareness of what the other, one, uh, other, other pillars or other communities are uh, doing, and to ensure that we benefit fully from one another's greater communication and synergy so we can have the maximum impact on promoting bilateral relations. Uh, of course, when we speak of civil society, Indonesia with its transformed democratic nature, uh, if I was asked what would be the most uh, important assets of Indonesia's democracy today, I would, uh, without hesitation, emphasize the vibrancy and the dynamism of our civil society. Some of the, our most eloquent and some of our most uh, brightest and uh, most uh, able uh, in young Indonesians especially are, are active in the civil society in Indonesia. And uh, so we have every interest to project and to ensure that they are actually engaged in various uh, bilateral and ASEAN endeavors as well. But thank you for reminding uh, ourselves uh, about that importance because we need to ensure, especially within ASEAN, 
uh, an ASEAN that is so-called people-centered, not only uh, involving meetings among, among officials, but uh, good to keep us honest. Please continue to remind us to make sure that we do precisely that. On the ASEAN US, as I said, it's just one of those things, uh, diaries issue, but uh, not a reflection of our lack of uh, recognition of the importance of the forum. I'd like, to, before I, I cede the floor, uh, to thank you very much uh, once again for uh, giving me this opportunity in, in, the, uh, in the moment that you have to share some thoughts uh, about Indonesia's views on bilateral relations with the United States and also on ASEAN matters as well. Uh, we value very much uh, the engagement with the United States bilaterally and also in the region. And as I said before, uh, we have the uh, most able uh, ambassador who has just recently arrived in Washington. Uh, please do extend to him your fullest support and collaboration, and I'm sure it will be a mutually uh, beneficial cooperation as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please join me once again in thanking Minister, Minister uh, Marty Nanadagawa for some very thoughtful and comprehensive remarks.